I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Kara Nelson, for those of you who didn't catch that. And I come from a university in the western United States, University of Montana, where I direct a program in ecological restoration. Ecological restoration is the field of assisting in the repair of ecosystems that have been degraded, damaged, or destroyed. And I also serve as the vice chair currently and immediate past chair of the professional society for scientists and practitioners in the field of ecological restoration. It's an international society with members in over 70 countries. And I want to put in a plug for University of Montana, especially while I have Fulbright staff here who are placing Chileans. We recently did an evaluation, a collaborative group did, on the field of ecology and scholarly productivity within the field of ecology, and UM ranked fifth in North American institutions. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with that region, it's similar in climate to here, so Chileans should feel right at home with volcanoes, earthquakes, <laughs> and all associated with them but also um, similar conditions for forests and forest ecosystems, which is what drew me to come here to Chile. So today I'm going to talk a bit about the field of ecological restoration and some remarkable things that are happening within the field, and then opportunities in Chile and uh, two projects that I'm working on while I'm here. So ecological restoration um, began in full force and identified as a field only in the 1980s, so it's a relatively new discipline. And in the last 25 years, it has gone from a niche area within ecosystem management to a dominant activity that's going on in natural resource management across the globe. We are now spending over $3 trillion annually in the repair of degrading ecosystems, which is really an amazing opportunity to improve not just ecosystems, but human well-being with the goods and services that we get from ecosystems. And I just wanted to point out something really inspiring, again, from my home in Montana. This is the Clark Fork River and the Blackfoot River from the movie A River Runs Through It, a wild river running through Montana. Uh, emptying the Western Rocky Mountains. And you'll notice something seems odd about this river, right? It looks engineered. Well, it was engineered because like Chile, we have a long history of mining in Western Montana. This giant river ecosystem was moved, rechanneled, and toxic sediment dredged out and removed, and the ecosystem restored. My lab assisted with the vegetation um, reestablishment and restoration and is now a fully functional floodplain. Of course, an improved ecosystem. It cost $100 million to implement this. It brought in $200 million of direct economic activity. So restoration is really important, not just for the ecosystems that are being improved, again, the goods and services, but also as uh, a way to reestablish the connection between humans and natures and restore our economies. So I said something remarkable was happening. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity issued a global challenge in their strategic targets to restore 15% of degraded ecosystems worldwide <coughs> by 2020. This is in their 2010 strategic plan, 15%. And there are countries who are now pledging this. This is a picture I took in Kuwait, where there is one individual tree left of the only native tree species left in Kuwait. They call it the lonely tree. And this is a common garden with seeds from the lonely tree that are being used to restore Kuwait. It's a fascinating but inspiring story about what people are trying to do today to meet this challenge. Um, I'm gonna be talking mostly about forest restoration and there's a similar challenge for forests in Germany, the Bonn Challenge issued by IUCN. Um, and this is a challenge to restore 150 million hectares of forest land, also by 2020. 
And this shows current pledges that might be a little higher than this. We're at about 65% of the way there with pledges. So countries have pledged. The US pledged about 10%. Brazil and China are also very large. Chile pledged 0.5 million dollars. Okay. So in Chile, the issues with forests and the need for forest restoration is driven primarily by plantation forestry. Um, in Chile, there's about 30 million hectares potential of forest area. So this is in the 1600s, 1700s. Uh, people have modeled that that's about how much forest was there. About half of that was gone by the 1800s. And in the 1950s, the US did an inventory of forests in Chile, and there's about 10 million hectares left. So much of the land that was formerly forested was converted to wheat plantations um, starting in the 1880s. But more recently, there's been this conversion to um, uh, plantation forests of pine and eucalyptus. And so I've got a schematic here starting in 1975. This is in the area around Concepcion, so um, south central Chile. And um, the green here, is areas of land that were covered by native <coughs> forest in 1975. And this is by 2000. So that was two thirds loss over 67% loss in that period of time. What's interesting is that in Chile overall, the story is about reforestation. So Chile is gaining forests, but that's because it's plantation forests that are coming in. So what's being lost is native forest and Chile is considered a biodiversity hotspot for forest ecosystems with a high degree of endemism, species that only occur in, within a, a small regional area. This, these are seeds of cacao, which is an endangered species of restoration concern in Chile. And here's just a picture of a pine plantation forest, and you can see that, um, of course, the species are different, but the structure is also very different in these forests, and therefore the effects on biodiversity and goods and services are different as well. Okay, um, interesting for me, coming from the United States, is looking at the drivers of restoration in Chile, and they are, uh, restoration is primarily occurring because of the Forest Stewardship Council, and this is a group that organized, um, I'm improvising here, but I think in the in the 1980s and 90s was really when they came into full force. And um, this is a like an or organic certification program where if your forest gets certified, you can then market your products, your certified products, for a higher amount of funding. And so it's through this FSC certification program that the forest <coughs> companies in Chile are engaging in restoration. So, I mentioned this amazing opportunity. We have calls, pledges for nations to participate. We have a very high amount of funding going into restoration. It would be really nice if in 100 years from now, our, you know, our global community says, wow, that was really an awesome investment. We're so glad we spent $3 trillion every year improving our ecosystems. But it's a huge challenge because, of course, repairing ecosystems is much more difficult than degrading them in the first place. And so we have a lot of needs within the field of ecological restoration in terms of how this is gonna unfold. And the time is right right now that we have full potential. So um, I'm gonna talk today about, very quickly, about um, two activities that I'll be doing on that I've started working on here. But I also wanted to mention the opportunity for me as a researcher from the Western United States, my research program has been entirely based in the Western United States. And I mentioned I direct a ecological restoration program at my university. Our students participate in capstone programs and field learning, and it's all been oriented towards the Western United States. My work with the Society for Ecological Restoration <coughs> has been global in nature, but my opportunity to participate <coughs> in international research has been really limited. So um, thank you to the Fulbright program for providing this experience for me. And the two things I'm working on are first, identifying priority areas for forest restoration. 
which is incredibly important because we want to be investing our resources into the areas that are most in need. And then secondly, well, the first one's at the landscape level. Secondly, once areas have been identified for restoration, what is an appropriate target to restore them to? And um, specifically, in addition to which species need to be restored, what are the within stand structures that we want to aim for? So the spacing and distribution of trees. So this map is the IUCN map where they identified priority areas for restoration. And this map was done at a very coarse scale. And the idea was to build broad support. However, on a technical basis, it has a lot of limitations. It's really been beaten up. Um, and so now, when you go to the website and you see the pledges towards the bond challenge, you see this, not suitable for national analysis. And I think they have this for each of their areas, which means that there's a big gap in um, determining the most important areas for ecological restoration uh, in forests. And this is something I'm familiar with. I did an assessment in the Western United States across 11 states of 44,000 forest restoration treatments and their efficacy. And particularly, we looked at how uh, our federal agencies were prioritizing areas for restoration treatments. So here's a schematic of these treatments overlaid on, I didn't explain this first graph. This shows level of priority with the orange being predicted to be in most need of restoration. And I won't, I won't show you results, but just to say that only 36% of the treated area within these 11 western states, these 44,000 treatments were in areas that were in high priority need for ecological restoration. So 36% is a pretty good percentage, just a little over a third, but it suggests that in the United States we are not using the most effective methods of identifying those areas. So building off of that, one of the reasons I wanted to come to Chile and be at the University on Hat in Concepcion is Christian Echeverria, who's a global expert in landscape ecology. He's an associate professor in the Forest Sciences Department. He also shares um, my interest in being active in professional societies. He's the founder of um, the uh, Latin American and Caribbean Society for Ecological Restoration, as well as um, being the president of the Chilean <coughs> Society for Landscape Ecology. And so, just very briefly, we are working with seven institutions from Mexico to Tierra del Fuego. And this is part of the teaching I'll be doing in Fulbright. We're doing an international collaborative course where the students are uh, building a system for prioritizing forest landscapes for restoration. And um, we are going to be presenting at a large congress in the summer and um, working with IUCN to build this into um, how the bond challenge and other activities are unfolding. The second project I'm working on is these reference models to guide forest restoration at the stand scale. And this is a very chilly specific project. So um, there, as I mentioned, the forest companies are very interested in restoration right now. And um, there are these high value forest stands you know, that have been identified for restoration. But how will this restoration unfold? Where will the seeds come from? And um, you know, what is going to guide the transformation of these forest types from plantations to the uh, rich ecosystems that we hope to have? And something that my lab has been doing in the US is <coughs> working on identifying the spatial patterns within reference stands. So um, you can imagine that if you want to leave a certain number of trees or plant a number, a certain number of trees in the stand, you could disperse them as in the picture of the plantation in a regular fashion. Or you could have clumps of trees with openings, right? And so what we're looking at is for a set of seven forest types in Chile. What is the spatial pattern of trees within the stands? And so first identifying that, and then secondly, using what we learn about that spatial pattern to guide prescriptions for forest restoration. 
and um, we've identified the forest types we're working in and the stands to visit. We're visiting three to five um, parcellas in each of these forest types and collecting data on stem maps that we'll then be using to build these models. So this is just an example of a reference stand um, and the clump sizes in terms of number of trees and uh, an example of pre-treatment. This is from the U.S., my example. In the U.S., it's not about planting trees. We're trying to remove trees because we have buildup of uh, tree species from the absence of fire. Without going into that, it's, so it's a different, it's tree removal rather than planting, but you can see this would be the pattern that the prescription to try to more closely resemble this reference forest type. So again, we have the bond challenge. We have two thirds of the way there to the pledges. It's still really unknown whether when we implement these projects, we're going to get the results that we want. And so as a global community within the field of forestry, forest ecology, and forest restoration, there's a lot of hard work to do. And really excited about the opportunity to be here and part of developing some of these solutions.